and he's burning down the Amazon, and he kidnapped Shamu and put her in a chlorine tank, okay? And there used to be a way to stick it to the man. It was called rock and roll. But guess what? Oh, no. The man ruined that, too, with a little thing called Todd Howard. It's the 13th of October, 2009. A new day in history for gaming. You've just finished watching year one, and I think it is a masterpiece of filmmaking after being directed to none other than Quentin Tarantino. And would luck have it, Double Fine, the creators of Psychonauts, Psychonauts, Rhombus of the Ruin, and who can forget, Once Upon a Monster. I think that's all they've got. Would bring out a free roam, open world, car driving, army rising, chop em up metal game starring none other than Jack Black. Uncharted, who? Who the f cares about that game? Dude, what about our game? When you whip out your battle axe, and you don't tuck it, you So the story of the game is simple-ish. Eddie Riggs, a roadie for a band who isn't in the prime of rock like he wants to be, so after a silly stunt from a band member and Eddie's death, he gets some blood in his belt, which is also the god Gondor, Glad Gladorian? I don't, I don't, after this dude fucks up the band and this rog rat Phil the Veal looking mother takes Eddie to the world of rock where you have to beat this gimp man of a boss, Emperor Daviculus, to save rock and start the revolution. revolution. I know, I know, it sounds fucking piece of shit. The story goes a lot deeper, I could make a whole thing about it, but I wouldn't say the story is a huge factor in this game. Is that a shit? It's mainly Jack straight black in it. Get out. Get out now! Now they did not mess around when it came to Jack Black in this game. I mean there is dialogue and cutscenes every few minutes in the missions. Which isn't some Red Dead Redemption storyline, it's 85% Jack Black spitting them goofy one-liners. Oh man, don't tell me I've been slaying hot girls this whole time. Or maybe just trying to pull more bitches, but why wouldn't it be? The Black Jack of Jack Blacks and Bang Bad. We've got the founder of Tenacious D, baby. But despite me joking, making it sound like a bad thing, it's not. The game has character behind it that you just don't see anymore. Not, not them, they're just bots with tits. But when it comes to the soundtrack, which is compiled of over a hundred songs of rock legends and some lesser known artists that you'll be like, eh, that's actually not that shit. And it's only downfall being a lack of videos on the game as part of any kind of fucking audio from it will hit you with more strikes than your dad after a couple of beers. And the voice actors in this game, aside from Gulliver's Travels, Ozzy Osbourne as a rock god who takes all your rock monument money. Well, it's about fucking time. I don't know. He's fucking cool. Lemmy from Motorhead as the Killmaster, who also heals people and has spiders for some fucking reason. Noble Killmaster, this woman. Didn't you see the signs? We don't like visitors up here. I don't really listen to Motorhead, but they're fucking there. And you got Rob Halford from Judas Priest, it's General Lionheart who works for what's his face. Lars Halford, why are you poaching my employees? Your former slaves are revolting, Lion White. Just like your clothes. Hmm, we'll see about that. You can tell the people who made the game actually gave a shit about what they were putting out. The writing and humour alone from these four characters, which in comparison to the soulless life suckers nowadays, that it's refreshing. Even the main menu is original as shit. Blackjack in a music store flicking through a vinyl record. Like eh. If you got the man who starred in School of Rock, you best fucking use him. You remember a moment of sexual impotence and we. But the feeling you get chopping up and burning a horde of enemies while listening to Children of the Grave leading your girth neck boys into battle, you just don't get much close. Even the graphics for a 14 year old game are holding up like a fine wine. With the art style that they ran with, it just, it just works. Combat in this game will involve enemies such as the Big Fist guy, the Blonde Girth Neck guy, and Sister Act 2. A few different enemies you'll encounter throughout the game as it progresses, and this guy. This fat bitch right here is the spongiest motherfucker. There's the axe, where you'll get all your combo chopping goodness with more upgrades that can be bought along the way from none other than Black Wankers. Sabbath. And the guitar, which fries boys, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Sometimes you got some teammates on your side, so you let them jump on your back and you rip them at someone like a fucking Beyblade. It can get tedious at points when there's 30 head bashes and you're struggling to leave with your Jack Black still intact, but hey. I wouldn't call the game difficult by a long stretch. And no, that's not because I played the game on normal. Hey, fuck you! The free roam in this game? Phew, phenomenal. Ph uh, okay, phenomenal is a little... It's a bit much, but it's alright. You can do small side missions throughout, or you could say, fuck that. 
I'm Ezio Aldatore from the Assassin's Creed trilogy and go looking for all the landmarks like a real explorer. Or maybe you want to know where Red Dead got the idea for those herding missions but made it significantly less fun. Okay, maybe no one can make those fun. Or maybe you want to do the racing missions which aren't great to be honest because you're against this fish dude constantly but hey, fuck it, they're there. You want to go hunting? Cool. Who needs Red Dead? I don't know why you bring it up, Red Dead. The majority of time you spent will be driving between missions and objectives, which now takes you down the vehicle path as the car is introduced in the first mission called the Deuce. With some missions including some different vehicles down the line along with upgrades on this baby from the Prince of Darkness himself gives you a feeling you're in good old Saints Row 2 specking out your car, but hey, the leader of Black Sabbath's here. But wait, no, fuck that. I got armor and guns on it now, so it's inspiring legendary game titled Mad Max. The guitar, as some of you may have heard, is used in a few rock songs. Well, in this game, they give you this guitar to fry people alive, summon your vehicle, or recruit loyal support from the British Empire. All you gotta do is whip out the guitar, spit some fire, and bam. You got a car, bam. You got an army, bam. You got an album. You can even unlock a guitar feature to summon wildlife to your aid. Oh yeah! Rock and after the car gets boring, you could just ride among the animals around. Why? Because it's cool. The nostalgia I had dive into this game would keep my ass high as a kite throughout this whole thing because past the crummy storyline and close to empty free roam, the game still has some charm so deep in its roots that makes you pick this up once every couple of years and say, ah, fuck it, I'm okay. The stage battles are another feature in this game that gave the main inspiration behind the Shadow of War's castle siege. Only better. You line up and let your head bash and girf necks do most of the killing for you. You get fucking wings for some reason halfway through. I don't know why. You have to set up murder merchandise towers throughout the map to give more fans to your stage to have more girth necks and battle chicks. Does it make sense? No, no. Does it need to? Absolutely not. But as soon as you get the wings halfway for the story, you'll find the best ways to spawn a tower, fly to the enemy's base, spawn some troops, and just hold it till they get there. You're gonna see this a lot throughout the story, and I think there's like a separate game mode where you can play it, but there's also an entire online build around it, which brings me to the multiplayer. <sighs> Man, the multiplayer. Don't get me fucking started on the multiplayer. Seriously, don't. I've never played it. I looked for a game. No one's Jack Black and me today. Alrighty, update. I have played the multiplayer. I dragged my buddy Jesus on and I tried it out. It was actually fucking fun. Like, <laughs> meet them! <laughs> fucking meet them! Look at him getting peppered! Oh, get the fuck God. out of here, coward! <laughs> Sorry, what the fuck is my whole army just died? Get up! <laughs> Get up! <laughs> Help me! <sighs> fuck you and fuck your family. If you actually know another soul who owns this game, I cannot recommend enough to give it a spin. You get to try all three factions with Gimped being by far the worst with this fucking... He just spits out one guy. And Ophelia just spawning an army in seconds being overpowered as a fucking god. Until he figured out how to get a metal beast and I was goo from there. Double fine. When you are done fucking around with Psychonauts and Grim Fan... Grim Fandango, that's... Hey, uh, I like that game. Sort out a sequel to this original masterpiece you created, or at least some kind of remaster. From the one guy that hasn't really played Psychonauts, give me Brutal Legend. Yeah! Yeah! yeah I guess you're yeah. right. I they got nothing is. on us, bro! Brutal Legend is pretty cool. Our game, Brutal Legend, is the only game in town. <laughs> 